So good afternoon again, and yes, indeed, uh, this is the last session uh, of today, uh, so please stay with us. Welcome to the 18th group exhibit, uh, Hydrogen Fuel Cells at Hanover Fair 2012. Um, it's my pleasure to, uh, uh, just in a minute, invite on stage uh, Robert Friedland, who is president and CEO of Proton Onsite. Our talk or topic for today is PEM electrolysis for hydrogen fueling and renewables energy storage. So please, your last warm welcome of today to our uh, next and last speaker, um, Robert Friedland, please. Thank welcome. Thank you. All the way from Boston, I believe. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Proton on site. Um, let's uh, get everybody up to speed with what's been happening uh, with Proton on site recently. I know there have been some rather important, interesting developments. So um, share them with us, please. Well, thank you. Uh, as, as some of you know, Proton is a 16-year-old company. We, have, uh, we specialize in PEM water electrolysis systems. We have uh, approaching 2,000 systems operating in over 70 different countries around the world. So we've been in this business for a long time. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we began to introduce a larger platform of electrolysis systems. PEM, PEM systems historically have been small, and uh, there has been questions raised in terms of their ability to scale for many of the larger transportation or renewable energy markets. Well, we introduced a 30 cubic meter an hour unit about a year and a half ago, which is selling very well, and uh, we're very excited about that. And uh, we are have a, the cell stack platform already designed, developed, and on test accumulating hours to move that up to essentially 200 kilograms a day, approaching 100 cubic meters an hour of, uh, of, of hydrogen production. So our ability to scale, and as we've scaled those, those products, they continue to work very well uh, and meet the market needs that we're finding in the commercial marketplace today, which is really a focus to to bridge both the energy and renewables markets, but also create the platform for real commercial products to build a, su a sustainable company today with, a, with those product platforms. Thank you. So we know that in Europe uh, also more and more people are expanding into the uh, PEM electrolysis um, uh, market. What does that mean from your perspective? Well, we're, we're really excited about it. Many companies shy away from competition. Uh, but we actually look at, at competition as something that, that really helps reaffirm our strategy and reaffirm the market. So as you see here today with, with what ITM has, has done in their expansion, what Siemens has announced in re with respect to PEM electrolysis uh, specifically for energy storage, uh, there are other companies that have uh, continued to develop PEM technology throughout Asia and throughout other parts of Europe. Uh, and, and really, we, we look at that as additional justification for our strategy. Uh, and, and we don't mind uh, sharing the market space with others because it's big enough for, for multiple players. But we, uh, we look at what's going on in Europe as a signal that, that we're on the right track and that we should continue along our development platform and that it'll be, it'll be the right strategy for us as we go forward. Okay. Um, so, so why is it that you think that, um, that PEM technology can be cost effective? at even uh, larger out output scales and especially or specifically for megawatts renewable scales? So there's, there's been this discussion when PEM technology comes up, uh, aside from the fact that it's often looked at as, as potentially being too small to really address these markets, it's also looked at very often as, as too expensive. Uh, and, and really that's just simply not true as it relates to where the technology state is today and where it's headed. For PEM technology systems, the ones that we sell commercially, where there is a like alkaline system in the marketplace, uh, we traditionally sell against that system. Uh, we're very competitive against them today on the first cost basis, and we're often very lower, uh, very much lower cost on a life cycle basis because the maintenance on a PEM electrolyzer is so low. As we go forward and we look at our larger scale platforms, the convergence of PEM fuel cells and PEM electrolyzers really continues to enable a driving down of the cost curve. And if you've been to our booth and you look at our fuel cell-like rectangular uh, cell stack platforms, which will, what will enable our much larger platforms going forward, the materials of construction that are, are uh, specifically designed and purposefully designed 
to converge with the manufacturing of fuel cell components. So the same manufacturers that make high volume bipolar plates for the fuel cell industry will make bipolar plates for me on that same equipment. The same thing with membrane electrode assemblies and other pieces of, uh, of, of elements of that cell design. So our ability to ride the cost curve in a much more uh, aggressive manner as we go forward, we feel in our studies show that any advantage that alkaline may have at larger scale is only because those PEM systems, one, have not scaled up to those numbers yet, and two, have really not taken advantage of the, of the cost curve that's coming. So we think that's also why Siemens and some of the other companies out there have really focused on PEM. So not so much where they is on cost today, which we still think is very competitive, but really where it's headed, which is going to be much lower cost in the long run than really an industrial built uh, alkaline electrolyzer can really ever be, in our opinion. Are there any questions from the audience at this point? Feel free to raise your hand and give me a sign and I'll come to you. Um, uh, share your questions freely, please. Uh, you, you mentioned your boot, uh, booth, it's uh, right over there, Proton on site, you can see it from here. Um, <clears throat> do make your way uh, over there today or, or tomorrow for the rest of the week. But speaking of which, um, what actually brings you here? What, what are you hoping to achieve? Uh, why Europe? Why Hanover Fair? Um, it's great to have you, but um, why are you here? <laughs> uh, well, we've, we've been operating in Europe for a long time. We have uh, in, our, in our generator cooling, in our, in our uh, semiconductor markets, in our laboratory markets, we have equipment really through Eastern and Western Europe in many, many different locations. Uh, we're, we're, we're really looking at forums like this to expand our exposure as it relates to these energy and transportation markets. While we still are in, in, in a number of, uh, of these different installations, we were, you know, 12 years ago we installed a system with Total in Berlin. Uh, so we've been in fueling for a long, long time, even in Europe. Uh, most recently as part of the Fraunhofer uh, fueling station that, that is uh, being discussed at their booth, we've, we've been the electrolyzer behind that and with the German army for renewable energy storage uh, that they're looking at as well. So those are just a few examples, and we've been in other parts of Europe as well, but those are a few in Germany, uh, where we've been over the years with some of our smaller technology. Now as we grow bigger, we want to make sure that the market understands what we have to offer, and that we can really work with the customer base over here, because certainly things are very exciting as we look at renewables rollout, not just in Germany, but Europe broadly, and we know that these markets, especially transportation uh, and renewable energy storage, are really going to uh, play a major role in Europe, certainly over the next five years, in many cases more so than in uh, North America uh, or in the USA alone. So uh, it's an important market for us, and raising that awareness as well as, as bringing more of that exposure for us is, is a key uh, issue, a key reason why we've come back. We had last exhibited here probably about nine or ten years ago, and now uh, we, uh, we're happy to be back and we expect to uh, maintain a presence at this fair uh, because we think it's the right way to help us uh, continue to introduce us to the market. <clears throat> Questions? Um, it's wonderful, of course, uh, at the, to conclude the second day of our group exhibit with such a positive story, a positive message. Um, but what, if any, are remaining barriers or obstacles that you still need to, uh, need, 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 need to uh, have tackled and, and overcome? The tough part about all the markets that we're looking at here is their, their, the timing uncertainty. And when Proton was founded in 1996, we were focusing on the transportation market at that time. We were, we were looking to build a commercial platform of products, but, but we were really focused on that hydrogen economy, which you know, at that time we all thought was five years away, and it, it remained five years away for the next 10 years. So we've, we've been really uh, focused on, on now not trying to predict that future too much, so the market timing is the biggest uncertainty that we think we face. We know we can scale up the electrolyzer system, but as my systems get larger and larger to megawatt scale, they have less and less utility to commercial markets. So the need and the drivers to do that and the timing are all in question because you need to deploy quite a bit of capital and Proton is a profitable company and we need to remain a profitable company, so the ability to deploy capital has to be based on 
on really looking at the, uh, what is the return and what is the certainty of that market. So building a product that we can't sell because we're years ahead of the market is really something that we can't afford to do. So I see that as really the biggest challenge for us and also many of the companies that are here to, to be able to uh, sustain that uncertainty and that, and that market timing question which is always uh, influenced by so many things going on in the world, political, economic, as well as technical. So those are, uh, that's really the number one issue that I see going forward. This is your last chance, but also still a massive invitation to share any questions you may have. Um, so I'm not sure whether my, the last question I wanted to put to you makes an awful lot of sense. I guess it still does. You're talking about the uncertainty of the market, the uncertainty of the timing in overcoming obstacles yeah. or meeting certain challenges. But, but can you say anything at all about what might be a you know, reliable indicator of when the time for the next step might come? I mean, what, what, are, you, what, what are you needing to see before you'll act or before you'll mm -hmm. go into a certain uh, risk area? Well, I think there's a few things. First of all, uh, we've, we've built Proton to be a agile, responsive company. So what we think we do well is be able to respond to the market quickly with solutions and deploy them into the field fairly rapidly. So in addition, we've worked on the basic stack architecture, which is the key technical issue in terms of scaling up a system for the next larger uh, or any larger platform that you're going to go after or even a different pressure platform. So those two areas we continue to work on. The other thing is we've really adopted a philosophy where we don't mind being a little bit of a market follower. So because what we've shown is our ability to react and build those systems quickly and bring them to the market at a very competitive price. So part of your answer, part of the answer to your question is in some respects we're going to wait for the others to make the first fatal mistake and you know in the computer industry you know, it wasn't the Michael Dells that came to the market first, but they were the ones who, who capitalized on it as well as others after Hewlett Packard and others failed at the beginning. So we're taking a little bit of that kind of approach, and I think it's something that uh, has served us well in some of the markets. We're doing that in our laboratory market now uh, in terms of being a fast follower as opposed to a market leader. So that's, that's really the strategy that we're employing. Um, and it's really key because while I can go raise investment capital and I can do things like that, uh, we've been there, done that, and it's, it's something we're very cautious about uh, in terms of surrendering the profitability that we've worked so hard to achieve uh, and, and, uh, and going back into burning cash um, to, to chase something that, if it's really there, it's going to be big enough to support multiple players anyways. So first to market doesn't necessarily mean uh, the one who's going to be there at the end of the day. So. At least that's our philosophy. Well, time will tell us if we're, if we're right or wrong. Wise words, and so we close. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for being with us here on stage today. Uh, Proton Onsite, Robert Friedland. Uh, you and your team will be available for questions for the rest of the week, I believe. Over Correct. there, that's the booth. The booth. Um, thank you very much. Please join me also in thanking Robert Friedland for being here. That's your cue for applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Thank very you. much. Um, I will see you... Um, the rest of the week. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, so I finally overrun my last session, and there it is. I want to thank you for being with us today. It was fun. We will see you again from 10.20 tomorrow morning. I hope you'll join us again. There's always free coffee here. There's always drinks here. And there's always interesting interviews here. So I thank you, and I wish you a great rest of the second day of the Hanover Fair. Thank you from Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells for today. Bye-bye.